Hello and welcome back to Lox Coffee and Combo. Where we invite you to what? Pull up, pour yourself a cup of something nice and strong, and let's chat. Okay, I ain't said it in a minute, but I'm back, but I'm back. Okay, if y'all want to know what I'm sipping on, got me some McDonald's coffee. Cream and sugar added. Let me know what you sipping on down below. So we back for Married at First Sight. Season 12. Episode 5, I believe. And I'm going to give it my own title. A Hot Ratchet Mess. Because <laughs> that's what it is, y'all. Okay, so we know what we got to do. We got to take it what? Let me lead us through our breathing exercises. In through our nose out through our mouth and get it together. We got to add that on it because that's what we need them to do. So one more time. It's three steps, y'all. In through our nose, out through our mouth and get it together, okay? <laughs> get it together. We need them to get it together. It is dreary where I live. I live deep down in the south, y'all, and I woke up to snow this morning. So I hope y'all can see me. And I had to leave the warm heat on, so I hope y'all can hear me. Okay. All right. So we open up the show, and I'm a, I promise today is going to be fast. I said that last week, but today has got to be because I got to be at work in about 20 minutes. <laughs> but last week we opened up literally with, this week we opened up literally with <laughs> the producers in the room with Chris. <laughs> he walking around, Paige walking around. And uh, <laughs> it's a mess, a hot, ratchet mess. So the producers is telling him, you got to tell her. Well, why I got to tell her? Because <laughs> she's your wife. <laughs> but we don't know. Everybody in the atmosphere had knew. And it kind of feel like even though we all knew because of the leaks and the blogs or whatever, but it actually almost feels like the audience knew <laughs> the producers knew. <laughs> Chris knew. Everybody in the world knew but Paige. And Paige just wanted to know what's going on. So then we get this flash on the screen. <laughs> Let's go back two hours earlier. <laughs> y'all, it's tripping. Okay, they tripping, y'all. They tripping. Man at first sight is tripping. So we have the other couples. Because y'all know I tell y'all every week it's a show within a show. So we say, they say, hold on. We're going to come back to the C and P production. Okay. We're just going to go ahead and catch y'all up with everybody else. And then we're going to come back to C and P production. So we have Claire and Ryan. And they, are, they seem to be getting along pretty good. Uh, they talk about stuff that you're supposed to talk about when you're married at first sight. Like living arrangements after this and children, all those good things that you're supposed to talk about, unlike they have to talk about a CFP production. So uh, they go see the dolphins, and they talk about living arrangements, and here's my, my concern with Claire and Ryan. This is my red flag with Claire and Ryan. Maybe it's an orange flag, not ruby red, but I don't know if Ryan is going to be able to adjust, and I don't think Claire is going to be able to adjust, and so it's going to leave us with a little bit of a kerfuffle. Okay, so they talk about the fact that he's pretty neat and organized, she's pretty messy. And that happens, you know, one spouse, one partner is so much. They keep saying, you know, like, she's like, are you going to be ready for somebody to be in your space? Because when you move in, and she did make a good point, it won't be your house, me living in your house, it'll be our house. Okay? Not me living in your house, but our house. So, you know, he feels like he can handle it. I don't know. They go see the dolphins, and it's cute, real cute. They take a picture. They feed him. They rub his belly. They have a little downtime where they're watching the dolphins, and they get to talk about these kids. So they talk about the name of the kids, and I think she said she wanted, if she had a girl, she wanted to name her Vera. Random. He said Elton. <laughs> So she was like, well, if we can hook John on it, Elton John, he was like, and I thought that was a good compromise because John is such a like traditional standard name. <laughs> of course, when you put the two together, you think about Rocket Man. So he was like, mm -mm. <laughs> but then we got to something a little more serious. And she asked him if he wanted to raise his kids in the church. 
And he really didn't take a long time thinking about it. He was like, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so she was like, she don't want to force religion on her children. She want her children to be able to come to whatever decision they come to on their own because she felt like she was forced. Now, I said this last week, this is going to be a problem because religion is something that is core and basic and it's whatever a person bases their other life decisions on, okay? It's that thing that is there and it de it defines other things in our lives. So I don't know, y'all. Y'all tell me if this going to work. Because I don't feel like Ryan is into Claire as much as Claire is into Ryan. And I'm going to discuss that in two minutes because I ain't got but 10 minutes left. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be a problem. That's it. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Then we get to, uh, who should we go to next? Um, Haley and Jacob, because they're easy. This week, they were just really easy. Um, I didn't remember them going on an outing, per se, but they had breakfast, I believe it was, or earlier meal and a later meal. And uh, they're still getting along. I, I think... I think she's warming up to him. I don't know. Again, I'm going to say it every week. I'm pulling for these two. These two make sense to me. I just don't know if she's going to be able to get over all the quirks and the weird stuff. But they talk about something cute. Like they had a really cute light conversation. Like she asked him what his favorite car was. I can't remember what he said. But I could already know that it has something to do <laughs> with an 80s theme and so he told her because she was like i know cars i was like okay get it sister girl and she's like i don't know that car though and he told her it was the one from back to the future <laughs> okay <laughs> he sticks to it he commits to it then they had another little conversation where she asked him what are one of the weirdest things he's done outside of uh, a strangest things he's done outside of marry a stranger and he said uh i think it was the pink thong it was the pink thong and he was saying it to her like she knew what the pink thong <laughs> and maybe they had talked about it off camera but she he was saying it to her like she knew what the pink thong incident was and he told about i guess back when he was in college somebody bought a pink thong and he walked around it i said okay jacob <laughs> Okay. <laughs> they had a beautiful romantic dinner. They came both in with the glasses, you know, with the lines. Again, 80s. He said they had just watched the Goonies. I said, is you wearing her down? <laughs> Get it, Jacob. Is you wearing her down? And later on, which we'll talk about in a minute, when they were together with the group, they seemed to be real comfortable with each other. They shared a kiss after the dinner. I, hey, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Then let's get to, let's go and get to Eric and Virginia. They get up the next morning and uh, they talking and they at the counter like married couples end up being, you know, his and hers type of situation. And <laughs> she always late. I understand. I know people like that. Sometimes I go through those phases in my life too. Just always can't get on time. So he's telling her that what he going to do is if they got to be there at eight, he's telling her six. And that's actually... That's actually smart. <laughs> but it start, this episode, we start to see a part of Eric that's giving me creepy old uncle or that dude with the wife and the three kids and the wife and the three kids can't talk. He do all the talking. Y'all know somebody said that on Jay Lee's Corner. I love her platform another content creator she said he giving her murderous vibes like <laughs> is the bodies in the basement or in the bottom of the plane like he he gave he gave off a real creepy vibe this week um he talks a lot he over explains and over analyzes a lot and i'm wondering if this is gonna be the bow that breaks <laughs> we know that virginia drink too much Okay, we just, we we figured out that week one. And so we kind of felt like that was going to be the issue. But I don't know. It may not be. It may be Eric. Because he was doing too much talking in this episode. 
They go down to the pool. Of course, she wants a drink. She wants the Las Vegas bomb or something. He agrees. Okay, you know, we it's your day. It's your time. We on honeymoon. They get in the pool, and somehow we get around to other men and women being friends with men other than their husbands. Eric has a problem with it. Now, a lot of men do. Um, but Virginia is young. And Virginia has told us 10,000 times that she still like to turn up, turn up. She still like to turn up, turn up. And so, uh, I don't know if this is going to work. He told her the only instance where a man could be a friend with a woman with a husband is that that friend is married to another friend. So, it's a couple thing, you know, or the man is gay. So she got a lot of male friends, she said. In fact, she got more male friends than she got female friends. <laughs> so what what you won't wanna do, Eric, when they <laughs> when y'all get back to Atlanta. I don't know. So I relate to men sometimes better than I do women. I have been working in a field where I have had to work with men more than women for over 20 years. I know I look 15. <laughs> Mind your business. But so sometimes I can talk to, I got guy friends that I can actually probably talk to better than I can girlfriends. So I get Virginia, you know, it ain't got to be nothing going on, okay, to have a guy that's a friend, you know, but Eric got a problem with it. But Eric has got like rules and I don't want to spend too much time on this plot, but okay, I'm just, I'm getting creepy vibes from Eric. He was, he was and I feel like they are trying to sell to us that they are just so connected and the chemistry is there. But when Virginia gets sober, is she still going to feel the same way? <laughs> Y'all tell me <laughs> down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> when she gets sober, y'all, is she going to feel the same way about Creepy Eric? Okay. Uh, she also had some odd issues about single parenting, like when they have kids. His, his schedule doesn't seem bad to me, 15 days on, 15 days off, because actually he's right. Because like half of the month, I'm at home. And, you know, he could work a regular job and not make every little league game, Virginia. So you, you I don't know. Actually, like I say, I, last week, I feel like this is going to work out for you, girl. Because when he are gone them 15 days, you could be turning up. Hey. Hey. And then you could be happy home wife when he there. So that was a little strange for me, too. But let's get to our darlings, Brianna and Vince. So thank goodness Vince's grandma is not, she's, you know, had a heart attack issue but it's not as bad as they thought so he's in a better space and place and he was glad that his girl held him down and they talked the next morning about um where they gonna live you know like townhouse versus condo and um you know, she, she said, well, where are we going to stay? Are we going to live in a high-rise condo? Because that's what I want. And then he brought up a good point, like a man should. It's more economical, <laughs> the townhouse. But she's like, well, uh, I want high-rise condo. And uh, can we have high-rise condo? He was like, oh, your family told me about how bossy you were. Then we get that clip from the wedding where they like, she's loving but bossy. She's sweet but bossy. She's smart, but bossy. And the pastor even said, a preacher even said, you're going to get a what? Loving boss. But don't get click, click, click because Vince said, you know what? You held me down. So I'm going to give you I'll give you what you want. And here is my theory. When they hook two people up and the guy gets smitten by the girl, it can work. It don't work no other kind of way. I've, I've been watching this show for three seasons and it don't work if the guy don't become smitten okay y'all note that because this is like she held me down so i'm pretty sure as long as brianna put it down <laughs> she gonna get what she want and champagne Vinny, as they call him he just long for a good good ride <laughs> but they had a really romantic date in the sand and we find out that they <laughs> I told y'all last week they was looking all post quarter like they had already had one year in well we find out that they already done sealed 
the deal. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. And we knew it was coming. He said it was organic though. And it probably was after that scare with his grandma and she just came in and kind of played her position well. It probably just seemed natural to go ahead and do what they do. He said he in. He he said it was magical. <laughs> I was like, hey, if Paige and Chris had a head that we would, okay, we finna get to that in a second. But they said it was magic. He said it was magical, so cheers to you. <laughs> they look good together. They, you know, they fit. So right now we have no complaints in the Brianna Vince universe. So let's go back, because we got to get back to them two hours. So they pacing around the room. The producers is telling him they got to, she got to tell, he got to tell her she lead the room. She pissed. Like, I'm tired of this, because I didn't tell y'all they was having a little meal at the table eating. And he told her he got some devastating news, but he couldn't tell her. But I'm your new wife. And if it's devastating, I need to know what it is. But he can't tell her. Y'all know. It's the CMP production, so I got to take us to church. Let the church say yes, yes, yes. Let the church say yes, yes, yes. You're going to have to go to church every week with them. Like, you got devastating news. Everybody else in the room know. You don't know them no better than you know me, right? <laughs> or does he? Uh, and so you can tell the producers, but you can't tell me. So she go out because she pissed. They telling him, you got to tell her. So then she come back in. He drags her to the bathroom, shuts the door, turn the shower, the faucet, and flush the commode. Tell her to take her mic off. And then he tell her. Then he come back out the room and sit down get them the dumb dumb nine and uh they like well what where's she at what's she she having a moment so you didn't stay in there and try to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm like this is the cmp production okay so then we get to the fact that the big bomb is that his ex-fiance is six weeks pregnant Okay. Okay, Chris. Chris, I mean, this is what we're going to do. Like, what is, what's going to happen? Is we going to find out that you a woman? I mean, every week it gets deeper and deeper and deeper with this guy. I mean, it's a nonstop train wreck with this dude, okay? Paige says it's been four days in. I, I don't know. I can't handle this, okay? So then she goes and she talks to Brianna. And Brianna, I don't know. I feel like you and Vince may have some problems down the road. Y'all just too perfect. Because, girl, when I tell you you came through again, you get the line of the week. Last week, you held your man down, and I gave you the star, golden star. I got to give you the golden star again this week, girl. You was like, you better put yourself first. <laughs> Go home, Paige. Put yourself first. Like, you only got four days. There's nothing to savage. I know y'all took vows. I know that. But there's nothing to savage. Go home. Put yourself first, babe. And I've been hearing people online say she got poor self-esteem. I was like, no, it's just a show, whatever. But now I'm beginning to see what they talking about, girl. You beautiful. You're educated. You're employed. You have your own property, girl. Go home. It's a good man waiting. Go home. So then... um. Chris talked to Champagne Vinny. <laughs> and Vincent was like, uh, I love his accent because he kind of sometimes drops letters. He said, well, if I was in Paige's shoe, <laughs> I would go home. Nobody's going to stay. It's been four days. What we staying for? Four days. <laughs> what we staying for? So then... Everybody gave the best good advice. The, the our cute couple that told, let's let's clear the air. Let's go. 
Let's book pack, girl. Let's throw page. Go on away party. We're going to miss you, boo. We're going to hook up when we get back to uh, Atlanta, though, girl. We're going to go get our nails done. We're going to digress and talk about it, get our hair done. Girl, we'll see you back in Atlanta. Or if you want to stay, get Paige another room, okay? <laughs> but let's dissolve this whole marriage thing. So they have dinner for what I don't know. <laughs> and they talk. And this is where I got so mad at Chris. Because Chris, I'm, we all saying Paige run, but it's really Chris. Because if we take him at face value, he just found out about the baby, all of this stuff, why wouldn't he go home? Why wouldn't he say, you know what, I don't want to hurt you, Paige. You're a beautiful, amazing woman, and I want what's best for you, and I'm not that. I need to go home and deal with my situation, so I'm going to speak to whoever I need to speak to about annulling this affair. Now, also, did y'all catch that when he was talking to Vinny, we knew they slept together that first day, but because Vinny asked, Vinny said, well, have you been with Paige? And he said, yeah. They slept together again after she found out he wasn't attracted to her? Because that's what I heard when he was talking to Vinny. Okay, so now, why are you steady toying with this girl? Why wouldn't you sit down at the dinner and say, look, I, I want what's best for you and I'm not it. I'm going to go back and deal with my fiance, my ex-fiance and this baby. And if I pass cross later, I will be a blessed and lucky man. But right now, this is not for us. Too much is too much. Instead, he feeds her and the heifer eats. I said, Paige, Paige. Paige, he is playing you. Why is you saying, you're beautiful, you this, you that. I'm going to put you my wife. She asked him questions like, what about her? How long, when it happened? Well, her father died. And so I slid by to pay my condolences and I slid in. <laughs> Girl, now he done fed you, gave you this little wimped over rose and you back in, Girl. So now the couples have to come together because, you know, they're there to support each other. And everybody, now Brianna, Brianna and Champagne Vinny already knew, but they had to tell the other couple that Chris got a baby on the way. <laughs> so this is when it hit the fan. <laughs> so uh, Claire don't pull no punches. <laughs> she said the girl got Stockholm Syndrome. And if anybody ever watched Law & Order... Any of the franchises, you know what Stockholm's is. <laughs> Where you identify with the abuser, the kidnapper, you in love with him now. <laughs> Girl's like, Girl, Claire, you got your own problems. Baby, when I say you hit the head, you did that, girl. Uh, the rest of them sitting around, but now Erica and Virginia are late. Uh, but the rest of them sitting around, and you know, they there to support Paige. And they tell, whatever, you know, we got you, we got you. And uh, Chris gets pissed because Chris is mad because they supporting Paige and not him. Paige didn't bring no fiance to the party. <laughs> Ex fiance three months ago. Paige didn't bring no baby to the party. Chris, is, out of the two of y'all, who you feel like needed the support? <laughs> Uh-uh. <laughs> mm -mm. So then Erica, so he goes off and needs a moment to compose himself. So she gets up and follows him. They get it back together, come back to the group, and then Eric and Virginia show up. Well, they don't know what's going on, so they still trying to convince us that they so in love. This is when the group finds out that Vincent and Brianna to seal the deal. We all talking and and then everyone want to know, well, what's up with you, Chris? Everybody talking, Ryan talking about how you know things going with him and Claire. Jake over there with the arm around. Haley, I see y'all. Everybody, everybody. And then, boom, they got to tell you two late birds <laughs> about the baby. So then Virginia hit him with the, you sure it's yours? <laughs> now, we all was thanking it, Chris. Now, she could have been a little more sensitive, but Virginia's drunk. And so is Eric at this point. So I'm like, I don't know who controlling who. <laughs> so they all try to give advice and stuff, and it goes left. <laughs> I 
I said, oh. <laughs> well, now, Chris, I don't know if he can lay hands or not, but he's from the church. <laughs> so I was like, Eric may be a little numbed up, but hey, Eric is ex-military, so he may can lay hands. I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Paul Page. Paul Page. And she in the confessional saying, I can see him tipping. <sighs> I'm um, girl who cares you should have been on the other couch on the other side of Brianna in your wings sipping your champagne and waiting on it to turn ugly when it turned ugly then go back to your own suite because you no longer with him okay that's what should have happened but I was <laughs> I was too through y'all Erica Virginia I gotta get places on time honey <laughs> and Chris Stop playing with us. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm here. I'm ready. Let's get turned up together. Get you some. Let me know down below what you're sipping on. Y'all have a great day. Thank you.